You're listening to the Luis Palau Legacy Library. Together, let's always remember that a life on fire for Jesus is a life well spent. Here's Luis Palau. We need to go to the Word of God, but before we do, we're going to read it. Don't don't think I'm not going to do it. You know, December 22, I was at home in Oregon about 10 o'clock. The phone rings. Usually it doesn't ring that late. My wife was in bed already. And the voice of my son, Andrew, he says, Dad, don't panic. There's been a plane crash here in Jamaica. And uh, tell mom, you'll see it on CNN. Tell her not to worry. We're okay. We're not hurt. I said, where are you going? Going to the hospital. I said, are you telling me the truth? He said, I am. I just hit my nose. This is what happened. They were coming into Kingston, Jamaica. And uh, there was a big storm, Caribbean storm. Suddenly... They feel the uh, Andrew's flown many times. It was the wind was blowing, the rain was coming, and he realized the plane was landing about halfway down the runway. And the Jamaicans always applaud when the when the plane lands. And Andrew said it's landed too late. And so he turns to his son John John. His wife was behind with their little girl Sadie and the other son Christopher. And he said, John John, how's your seatbelt? Boom. And he hit the head, and for a moment, he didn't know what happened. The plane was coming down the runway, and at the end of the runway, there's a a very big dip. There's a highway, and on the other side of the highway, there's a big mound, and on the other side of the mound, there's the Caribbean Sea. The plane came at top speed, you know, probably 180 miles or so, maybe 140, but in the wind, the wind behind, they went over the the highway, and the, the plane belly flopped on the mound just a few feet from the Caribbean Sea. And if you see it, have you got the, sc- the screen showing up there? Did you get to see the, the plane? Look at that. That was one angle. Then give me the other angle, the one from the ocean. Can you see that one? Look at that. That's another angle. See, that's the mound of uh, garbage and stuff. And then the last one, look at that. Look at the plane. That plane belly flopped on the side. And then there's one more shot, I think, which is, look at that. Look at the plane. Nobody was killed. Everybody sent me emails and said, it's because Andrew was on the plane that it didn't catch fire, you know? (laughs) Then we found out there were seven other ministers on the plane. So uh, the blessing spread out. But you know, it didn't catch fire. The landing gear was torn up. The right engine was gone. Andrew in the dark, it was raining. It was windy. It was uh, like almost midnight in Jamaica. He goes out on the wing. My daughter-in-law had no shoes on. She never cut her feet. They thought they were going in the right direction. Suddenly they put their feet and it was the water. He said, oh no, let's go the other way. They go the other way and it was this highway that was at the bottom and he saw the water running and he thought it was a river. He was half nuts. You know, I mean, he thought it was a river. He said, wait, 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 there's a river. Then they realized it was a road. Well, anyway, I thought to myself, wow, he could have died right then and there. And I thought, wow, to have eternal life is kind of important even when you're young, you know? Don't wait till you're old like grandma. Sure, grandma's getting closer than you, but you'll never know. And then we were in Santa Cruz Beach about 9-11. The very week after 9-11, we were on the beach in Santa Cruz having a festival. And uh, one night, there was a family called Wagner, and they were in charge of making sure that the beach was absolutely not a piece of dirt, not a Coke bottle, nothing on the beach when it was over. Two teenage girls, beautiful girls, 16 and 15, and the dad and mom. They finished the beach job. It was about 11 o'clock at night. They were driving home. And as they were driving home about six miles from the beach in Santa Cruz, a drunken woman on an SUV with three children in the back, one a baby, ran a stop sign, smashed the car against the car. The two little girls were killed on the spot, uh, the, twin, the, the 15 and 16. The dad was hit really bad. I only heard about it in the morning through one of my buddies And uh, he told me, I said, let's go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital and the nurses said, you cannot see the dad. His head is double the size and he's totally out. But the wife you may see. So I went over and I held her hand and she opened her eyes. And she said, oh, Luis, you've come. Did you hear what happened last night? I said, that's why I'm here. She said, Luis, think of this. Last night, the girls, their only children, the girls saw the face of Jesus for the first time in their lives. And I thought, oh, wow, that is eternal life. And then, you know, the other day I was reading, one of my buddies was in the back over there, found out from the CIA website that every day around the world, 
155,000 people die every single day. Every day, 155,000 people. And some of them because of accidents, drunkenness, speeding, some die from old age, some from suicide, some from wars. And the thought is, what happens to people when they die? And what is God's desire? So let's read in 1 John chapter 5, if you have a Bible, just four wonderful promises that if you've never heard them, it'll bless you beyond imagination. And if you know them, it'll reinforce your joy in Jesus Christ. 1 John, which is almost at the end of the Bible, chapter 5, and look at verse 10. Look at what it says. Listen carefully. This is the Word of God. And look at what it says. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. He who has the son of God has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, for a moment, I'm going to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and hear what the Apostle John says. All of you know it off by heart, I'm sure, but let me read it to you anyway. John chapter 1, verse 9. Listen to this. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, Jesus, of course, And though the world was created by him, the world did not recognize him. He came to those who were his own, but his own didn't receive him. Yet to all those who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gives them the right to become children of God. And then finally, John 10, 28 and 29, just a brief reading, all about the gift of God. He says, Jesus is speaking, my sheep, Listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who gives them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Now notice this, dear friends. The gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. There is nothing greater than that. There's all sorts of wonderful stuff that God has given us in the scriptures. It's promised all over. But the first thing you've got to notice here is God has given us eternal life. Eternal life is not something you buy, you pay for, you exchange, you make a deal with God about. Eternal life is the gift of God. And if my son Andrew, my daughter-in-law Wendy, The two boys, Christopher and John John, and little Sadie, the little three-year-old girl, had died. They would have gone to heaven because they already had eternal life. All the boys, the girls, and my son had received Jesus Christ. So they have eternal life. They would have gone straight to heaven. And Mrs. Wagner, the sweet 16 girl, and the 15-year-old daughter, beautiful girls, the only children they have. They went to heaven, and like like she said, they saw the face of Jesus for the first time. Now, that is because they had accepted the gift of God, and they had eternal life. Now, you notice it says, God has given us eternal life. It is a gift, dear friends, and you receive it by faith when you recognize that you've got a spiritual problem, and you want to get right with God. St. Paul put it this way. I wrote it down in Romans chapter 6. He says, the wages of sin is... Death. But the free gift of God is life. eternal life in Jesus Christ. Sin creates a problem. And you know, the one thing we've got to realize is this life is in his son, it says. This life is in his son. And Christ died for sins once for all. The righteous one in place of the unrighteous to take us to God. You know, the thing we have to realize that to get eternal life, we have to deal with the problem of sin. Sin is a very serious thing. It's serious because it's an insult to our Creator. Every time we choose to disobey God, we're really spitting in the face of God. We're really saying, God, I know what the, what the truth is. I know what morality is, but I don't give a rip. 
You know, you spit in his face and you say, I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to break the law. And I don't give a rip what you think. It's spitting in the face of God. But then sin also destroys people around us. Look at how many people are destroyed because of a dad who walks away from the mom and the children. Think of all the fatherless kids that float around in the USA and they're angry and they're upset and they're mad at society and mad at the family and they're angry at God because they feel abandoned by God and by man. And then sin affects us. So we got to deal with that problem. And so God the Father, that's why it says, God has given us eternal life. This life is in His Son through Jesus Christ that we can know that we have eternal life as a gift of God. Now, you might say, why Jesus Christ? Well, two reasons. One, God determined it. God said, the way to eternal life is through my Son, Jesus Christ. And that is the way and the truth and the life. So you've got to know Jesus Christ for yourself. Now, the second thing is this. Why Jesus Christ? Because he's the only one who paid for the sins of the world dying on a cross. And when you go to a church, usually there's a cross somewhere out on the building or inside to remind us that God the Son voluntarily gave his life so that you and I could deal with the problem of guilt and sin in our life and we could be forgiven, and then God can give us the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And you know, it really is very thrilling to realize, but it's so simple. God determined, if you want eternal life, hey, it's a gift. I'll give it to you. But you have to take the gift, and the gift is from God. And this life, he says, is in his Son. Now, you know, eternal life is not something you get when you die. Eternal life is Jesus Christ living in your heart. You say amen here? You better believe it. If you believe it, it absolutely is true. And it says over here, whoever has the Son of God has life. I've got life since I was 12 years old. Down in Argentina, a missionary counselor at a summer camp for boys sat me down and explained to me how I could receive the Son of God and have eternal life. Now that's 63 years ago. And I've had eternal life since I was 12 years old. And I'll tell you, it gets better every year to know Jesus Christ. It really does. I'm an old grandpa now. Not so old, but old. And, uh, you know, I'm a grandpa. That says it all. But I've had eternal life since I was 12 years old. And from that night, I knew that I had eternal life. And the reason was very simple, and I'll explain it in a second. Whoever has the Son of God has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. So the simple question is this. Do you have the Son of God tonight? Do you have life therefore? Have you experienced what it is to have eternal life and know that you have eternal life? Do you have eternal life tonight? Right here? Do you know that you have eternal life? If I walked off the platform and I said, hey buddy, do you have eternal life? Would you be able to say, absolutely, and I know it. But you may say to me, well, Luis, how can you know that you have eternal life? How can you be so sure? Well, because the scripture says, God has given us eternal life. Whoever has the Son of God has life. If you have the Son of God, you've got eternal life. You don't buy it, as I said. You don't pay for it. You don't exchange it. It's not on basis of sacrifice. It's the gift of God. But you may say, how can you be so sure that you have eternal life? Well, it would be the same as if you said to me, hey, Luis, I heard that you've been married for 49 years. Are you sure that you're married to Pat Schofield and you got four sons? And I said, I'm sure. What if I said, no, I don't know, really. You'd say, are you nuts or what? You know, 49 years and you said you've been married and you're not sure? How am I sure? Well, 49 and a half or so years ago, I said, yes, I signed a piece of paper on top of it all, you know. I made a decision, and I've been married, and it hasn't been bad. It's been pretty good, and it's lasted 49 years. We'll keep each other. But, you know, it, yeah, we know, we know. That's how you know. So have you said yes to Jesus Christ yet? That's a big question. Have you surrendered to him? Have you said, Lord Jesus, I want eternal life. Come into my heart. I want it. And do you know it? That's the question I have for you tonight. It's my duty and my privilege to ask you, are you sure that you have eternal life? 
Do you have eternal life? And if you don't, would you like to be sure? God has given us eternal life. This life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son of God has life. Do you want life or do you want to keep on being dead? Separated from God. He is the light of the world. And when He comes into your life, you know that you have eternal life. Even more than I know that I'm married to Pat Schofield. I know I have eternal life because Christ lives in me. He's here right now in me. My wife is in Oregon. Jesus is here. So I'm very sure that I know him. The second thing that you ask me is, how can I have the Son of God then? Because God has given us eternal life. This life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son of God has. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have. It's as simple as that. So if you say to me, Luis, I want the Son of God. I want to have life. I want to know it just like your son did on the crash and the two little girls who went that night to be with Christ. How can I know it? Well, that's why we read John chapter 1. It says, to all those who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives them the power to become children of God. Jesus came through the Blessed Virgin Mary without a human father, by the work of the Holy Spirit, because he's God the Son. And in spite of that, the previous verse in the Bible says, he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. And it's true. It's a choice that humans have to make. And many people in Israel, the land where Jesus was born, of a Jewish mother, nevertheless said no to the Messiah. And there are many Americans who still say no. But Jesus, it says over here, first, to all those who receive him, receive him. So have you received him yet? Have you opened your heart and said, Lord Jesus, I receive you. Come into my life. Please take over. Have you made that decision? You remember the two thieves on the cross when Jesus Christ was crucified, where he did the job of taking care of the problem of sin? You remember both thieves were mocking him at first? You remember that? And they both mocked him and said, if you're the son of God, why don't you get off the cross and get us off this cross ourselves? And then something unique happened. They both were mocking. They were both despising the son of God. And then one of them suddenly switches. It's called repentance. And suddenly he berates his old buddy. They were murderers, criminals, thieves. And he says to his buddy, hey, how are, how are you insulting this man? We deserve what we're getting, but he's done nothing wrong. And suddenly he turns to Jesus and he says, Jesus, will you remember me when you come in your kingdom? Something happened inside. It was an instant. You don't have to have a lifetime. He obviously didn't know much, but he knew enough. And so he says to Jesus, repentant, would you remember me when you come in your kingdom? Now, if we have been Jesus, we probably would have said, you dirty little crook. You know, you're a criminal, you're a thief, you are a murderer. And now at the last minute, just before you kick the bucket, you want me to forgive you and, and give you eternal life? Forget it. We, we, he could have said that. He could have said it. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Man. That's the mercy of God. You see, but it's so unfair. I mean, the guy's a criminal, a crook, a thief. The last minute he repents and he goes to heaven. Look, if God was fair, we'd all go to hell. So keep your mouth to yourself, you know? <laughs> we may not be murderers, and some of us are not that crooked, but we've got enough darkness to cover the ground. So the man was forgiven. That day he died. Where did he go? To heaven. Because heaven is the Father's house. When you die and you go to heaven, you experience eternal life in all its glory. In Latin America, when you ask many people, because of our background, do you have eternal life? Many of them say, how can I know till I get there? Well, it's too late by then. You've got to settle it now. By the time you find out where you're going, too bad, it's over. So eternal life must be accepted now. And you know, the Holy Spirit of God speaks to the heart. You remember the case of the Apostle Paul in jail in Philippi? He had been preaching in the city of Philippi, and suddenly they arrested him. They beat him 39 times. He was bleeding in his back. They threw him in the worst, in the worst jail. 
they put his feet in some, something or other. And that night at midnight, Saul and his buddy, they were singing at midnight and praying to God. And all the prisoners were listening. And suddenly at midnight, there was this massive earthquake. The prison gates flew open. The jailer came running, was going to take his life, thinking all the prisoners would have escaped and he'd be finished. And Paul says, do yourself no harm. We're all here. He was so shaken up, the jailer, he asked for a light, went into the inner place where Paul and Silas were. He fell before them and he said, gentlemen, what must I do to be saved? And the apostle Paul said to him, believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. You and your family. My dear friends, that's as beautiful and simple as God has made it. We religious people often confuse and complicate the thing. The thief on the cross, he wasn't baptized. He didn't do communion. He didn't go to confession. He didn't cross himself. He couldn't. He was up there. <laughs> he could do nothing. He was done. But Jesus said, today, buddy, you'll be with me in paradise. What a gift is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the question is, have you accepted the gift? Have you received Jesus Christ? Do you believe in them? It says very simply, the beauty of it. It's a gift. You don't pay for gifts, but you receive a gift by faith and you say thank you and you enjoy it. Eternal life is the gift. And he says to all those who receive him, who believe in his name, at that moment, he makes you a child of God. So it's my duty to ask you, have you received him? And if not, why not? Don't you want to know that you have eternal life? It's the gift of God in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ that day himself died. You remember, it was dark from noon till three, and he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He knew it was a rhetorical question for our benefit. He was paying for the sins of the world. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone to his own way. We all have our story. We all have skeletons in our closet. We all have stuff we've done that dishonors God. But God says, God laid on Jesus the sins of us all. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Jesus is alive today. He is. And when you open your heart to him, he comes into your life by the Holy Spirit. And I was 12. Some of the guys come to Christ when they're 30. My dad was 24. And my dad knew he had eternal life. He was a young businessman. My dad was 34 when he died down in Argentina. He got bronchopneumonia and he was gone in nine days. I was in boarding school and I had to run home because he was sick, but I arrived just a few minutes late. My dad was home. He sat up in bed and he began to sing a song about heaven. And then exhausted from the galloping fever, my dad pointed up to heaven and he quoted the apostle Paul, I'm going to be with Jesus, which is better by far. And a few moments later, my dad went to be with the Lord. But he had eternal life. And I was only 10 years old when he died. And I thought to myself, man, that's the way to die. You know, singing a song and quoting the promises of the Bible. Because when you have eternal life, death is still an enemy, but you know where you're going. Those two beautiful little girls up in Santa Cruz, the mom in the heartbreak of her, losing them. They were beautiful little girls. They loved their teddy bears and they loved their cats and they were great students, but they knew Jesus Christ. So she could say, listen, Luis, they saw the face of Jesus last night. Man, that is the beauty of eternal life. Do you have eternal life? And then we read the last passage on purpose because Jesus Christ says, I give them eternal life. There we go. He repeats it over and over because we know that all of us think we have to do something, pay for it, make a deal with God. The Lord says, no, I give you eternal life. He says, I give them eternal life. Second, you shall never perish. That is, you'll never be lost. And third, no one can snatch you out of my hands. Man, the triple assurance of eternal life. Do you have it tonight or are you still searching? If you're still searching, you came to the right place. And in about three minutes, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of confession in which you surrender to Christ. 
You confess that you believe in him. You open your heart and you receive him into your heart. You have to make that decision and I want to help you. But look at it again, what he says. I give you eternal life. You will never perish and no one can snatch you out of my hands. And then to double reinforce it, he says, my father who gave them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Is that great or what? Huh? Eternal life. But if you've never received Christ, you have to make a simple decision. And I want to close this invitation, inviting you to simply open your heart to Christ. You remember what he said to all those who receive him, who believe in his name. You receive him by faith. You invite him in a prayer and you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And all you have to say is that, I believe you and I receive you because the gift of God is eternal and this life is in his. Whoever has the Son of God has. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have. You can have eternal life from today on just like I did when I was 12 years old and I'm an old grandpa and I've had eternal life because I received the gift of God. So let's bow our heads in prayer, shall we? Some of you, I'm sure, are saying, okay, I want to receive Christ. Guide me in a prayer so I can receive him into my heart. So let's pray together. I will lead you phrase by phrase. And if honestly in your heart you say, I want to have the assurance of eternal life, pray this prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you pray, remember that marvelous promise. I give you eternal life. You will never perish and no one can snatch you out of my hands because God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. Whoever has the son of God has life eternal forever. And so tonight you can pray and receive Christ. Pray with me out loud this prayer if you feel it in your soul. Oh God Almighty, you have spoken to my heart tonight. I want to know you, Lord Jesus. I want to have eternal life. I want to be sure that I'm yours. And right now, Lord Jesus, I confess with my lips Jesus is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead and therefore I have eternal life. Thank you, Father. I'm yours forever because Christ lives in me. And I thank you in his name. Amen. Amen. This is Kevin Palau, one of Luis Palau's sons. Toward the end of Dad's life, he had zero regrets about spending his years sharing the good news. He was convinced that an even greater harvest was waiting in the generations to come. We agree, and we're continuing the work Dad started. We are passionate about bringing the gospel to every person on the planet. Millions still don't know the hope that's found only in Jesus Christ. If Dad was here today, I think he would say, don't wait. Share Jesus today wherever you go. If you'd like to join with us in spreading the good news around the world, you can visit luispalau.org to give a God-honoring gift today. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you.